Baby? Baby? Listen, come here. My love, I thought we had spoken about this. Where's my panty budget? Ah, uh, my love, we've spoken about this panty budget thing. We both agreed that it's important. You like seeing me in my nice panties, I like being in my nice panties. And I need my panty budget to make that happen. So, if you need to move things around, do it, okay? In the meantime, nah, I'm taking my bags, I'm going to Santon. I'm going to go to La Senza. I'm going to bag what I want. And when I get to the till, I'm going to swipe with my gray card. If my gray card declines, it's going to be a problem. Just make sure that there's money in there by the time I swipe, okay? I love you, and you know I'm doing this for you. That's why we have a panty budget, so shop. Love you, now. I'm gonna try, gonna try, gonna try. Work till I die, till I die, till I die. I'm gonna fail and get up, cause I'm not giving up on my dream. Hey, gorgeous, and welcome to my channel. I'm Kabana Shimange, and this is How I Do Things, the show where you send me your questions, and I'll let you know how I would do things. Now, you can take it as advice, or just use this as entertainment. Use it, don't use it, do what you will with it. I'm just letting you know what I would do if I was in your shoes. Now, today we are talking about budgeting again, because there were a number of questions that we got from last week's budgeting video, which was all about how do you divide your lifestyle costs? 35% for housing, 20% for the car, etc, etc. But there were some extras that we needed to talk about. Tithing, the Benti budget, all of those other things that we find important. Black tax as well. How do we find the budget and where do we, what do we do with those extras? Do we take from another section or do we create a whole new category that we need to budget for in our lives? That's interesting. And I'm glad we're speaking about it. I'm glad you asked about it because now we're talking about it. So if you have any questions that you want to send to me, head over to my Instagram and look for this picture right here. It's in my Insta story highlights at Kopano Shimange on my homepage. You'll find a little lavender circle that says how I do things. Reply and let me know what you want to talk about. Or you could just comment down below and let me what questions, let me know what questions you want me to answer now next. Chill at the Tuesday or our Motivation Monday, our Saturdays we're taking care of ourselves or a deep conversation during cozy conversations. Now, let's not waste any more time. Let's get straight into this video. But first, first, my darling, have you subscribed? Have you subscribed to my channel? I put a whole lot of work into this for you. I want to know what questions you have and I come here and I answer them daily darling at half past seven so if you have not subscribed to my channel it is completely free head over below this video this little red word that says subscribe it is completely free you'll be in on the action that happens here every single day just do it okay so you know that i always save the best for last let's jump straight into this list number one is tithing now if tithing is important to you then you think into yourself in this budget that i already have where am I going to find the money to actually take a tenth of my income into the church or into charitable donations, whichever way that you interpret tithing? It is a completely different category. So you're not going to take it out from your savings and investments. You're going to put it right at the top as tithing, 10% tithe. Now, now you're thinking to yourself, okay, fine, but there's all these other things at the bottom of my list. What am I going to do with these things? It means that you have to adjust. Tithing, like savings and investments, is something that you do first and then you use the rest of your money for everything else. So if it means that you have to adjust how much you're taking out for your house, how much you're taking out for your car, how much you're taking out for groceries, then you have to readjust your budget so that you can find that 10% for tithing. Personally, the Lord spoke to me last year about tithing and he kept on saying, test me, test me, test me. And then I found the verse in the Bible, Malachi 3.10. I'm re reading the New International um, Version, which says, Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be enough room to store it. Tithing is a personal thing, and you decide whether you want to or whether you don't. People interpret this in different ways as well. They say to themselves, tithing is me putting a portion into the church and the rest for charitable donations so I can put back into God's people. 
other people think that tithing is something you do after you pay for your main expenses. Some people think that tithing is something you do first before you pay for all the other expenses. So it is up to you to decide how you categorize it. But I personally would put it right at the top as 10% of what comes into my bank account. That's how I defined it. So you have to work your budget around the tithing after you've taken out the 10% and you decide whether you want to do it or whether you don't want to do it and how consistent you're going to be with it. Number two is investing in yourself. Now, this is something that's important in my house, okay? We pay for things such as coaches, such as training, such as career development. Now, for some people, this may actually be formal education, but for us, it is informal, it is online coaching, it is actually having a coach and a mentor, which we pay. It is a very important budget that we have. Now, this can be something that you can decide to take out from your savings and investments, and I'll tell you why. If you're investing in yourself, you're only going to become better at making money, and that's what we've seen with investing in ourselves. So we take about 5% of our income, 5 to 10% of our income, and we put it into coaches, onto online courses, onto learning about the industry that we are in. It takes money to learn about these things and to get the premium content. And because of that, I personally know that when I invest in certain mentors and coaches, they've helped me to increase my income. And that's why it's important for me to invest in them. So if I take 10% of my income every single time to learn from my coaches, to be part of masterminds, to be in coaching groups, etc., my income increases. Now, it can increase by 30% in three months. And that's a huge increase from taking 10% of my money and investing it in learning. So you can decide whether you want to do this. But I personally think that you should try putting away money and investing in yourself and learning how to become better at the job that you do. And this will come out of the savings and investments category. Number three is very similar, but it is different. Reinvestment in yourself. Reinvestment is taking part of your profits that you're making. This is mostly for your entrepreneurs. So taking part of your profit and investing it back into the thing that is making you money. So if I have a business, so for example, my YouTube channel is a business, whatever money I get from YouTube, I take a portion of that money and I better my channel, either getting someone to edit, buying lighting, buying hair and makeup, whatever I need to make the thing that makes money better. Reinvestment is such an important thing. And if you're in business, dedicate the first two to three years of your business and taking a huge chunk of your money to put it back into your business to make your business better. Again, this is something that's going to actually help you make more money in the long run. Number four is black tax. The one that always comes up. Where do I find the money for black tax? Black tax is a category all by itself. And this is what you need to think and see and realize about black tax. If we are taking 35% for the house, 20% for, for transport, 10% for groceries, etc., etc., when you add the black tax category and you're taking about 5%, I personally think black tax should be about 5% of your income, 5 to 10% of your income max. If you're going to add that, understand that you are subtracting from all the other parts. So if your budget looks like this without black tax, it will look something like this with black tax. Now let's look at what would happen if you earned 50,000 Rand with this budget that has black tax. You would have this much for your house and your car and your groceries without black tax. But then as soon as you add the black tax category, your money starts to look like this. Black tax makes a huge difference in your life. And it means that it will affect where you live, it will affect what you drive, and it will affect how much groceries you're buying, it will affect your investments. A lot of people tend to take money out of savings and investments, out of the insurance payments, out of their medical payments, out of their clothing payments, in order to make way for black tax. If you ask me, if you're going to add black tax, things that you can start to minimize are things such as your clothing, clothing budget and your personal care budget, as well as your personal and discretionary budget. Go out a little less, buy a little less clothes, etc., etc. If you want to make space for black tax without having to touch the money that is in your house, your car, as well as your groceries. Those are the adjustments that you can make. 
but black tax is a category all by itself and because of that you need to start decreasing on the other categories in order to make space for that black tax. Number five is the Penti budget or anything that falls into the personal care self-love category. Having your facial washes and having your moisturizer, that is a necessity. It's not going anywhere. But then deciding to go for face masks and go for facial treatments, those are extras, those are personal care. Now, you can decide to add this into the personal and discretionary budget. Take money from there and that is fine. Or it can be in your groceries side of things. When I think of a Bendy budget, I think of things that I love, that are extras, that I love to buy, that I like to collect, things that make me feel really good. If you like shopping, if you like um, buying certain things for the house, if you just cannot go a month without buying extra books, whatever you like to indulge in, this is where the category is. Now, for this, you do not create a new category for this. It has to come out of either your clothing budget or your personal care budget, which is in groceries, or your personal and discretionary budget. Most of the times it's gonna come from the personal and discretionary budget. But we're not going to create a whole new category for this indulgence that we have. You need to find it in other places. We can't decrease the, how much we spend on the house or decrease how much we're spending on groceries just because we want to indulge. This is also for people who love buying handbags, who love buying extra clothes, who love just getting a wig collection. We cannot create a new category for this. It has to come out of personal and discretionary, out of your clothing budget, or out of your personal care budget. Now, number six, I'm gonna tell you the truth right now. The best way for you to find the budget for everything that you want in your life is to make more money. This is what my husband said. He's like, if you have standards in life, but your budget does not meet to your standards, then you have to make more money. Here's an example. So you earn, you earn um, 50K a month, and your budget for your house is then 17,500 Rand. But you're thinking to yourself, I want an executive suite. I need a bigger house. 17,500 Rand is just not gonna make it. Then you actually have to steal money from all the other categories, or you have to understand to yourself that your bougie-ness is going to make you broke. So you have to find money from somewhere else. This is where multiple streams of income make your life so much better. This is what I like to do. I have multiple streams of income and I know that money is going to come from A, money is going to come from B and money is going to come from C. Sometimes I like to say that money that comes from A is my indulgence budget. My panties, my wigs, I can go on a spa date with this money. That money is called spoiling yourself. I know that everything that comes from that category, I am free to do whatever I want to do with that category. And this is a beautiful thing about having a side hustle and knowing that the side hustle brings in an extra 10k a month you know that with the money that comes in from the side hustle that is extra money so it can be used for extra things you can decide to use that money to grow your investments you can decide to use that money to um, save up to change your house or you can use that money to upgrade your entire life multiple streams of income honestly they make your life so much better. And the final category is number seven, home improvements and upgrades. If you feel as though you want to upgrade your car, you want to upgrade your house, you want to upgrade your wardrobe, you want to upgrade anything that's in your house, buy extra pots, buy new sets of you know pans, you want new plates, that must come out of either your discretionary or your savings. And I'll tell you why it will come from your savings. We have all of these categories, right? We have the house category, we have our car, we have um, our personal discretionary and grocery and all of those things. In life, it mustn't be that we are trying to fill up the whole thing. So if you're earning 50,000 Rand and you have 17,500 Rand for your housing, that doesn't mean you have to spend all of it on your house. You can spend below the budget and whatever's below the budget, you add into your savings. Now, there is a portion of your savings that you can actually use for upgrading your life, um, buying pots, buying new sets of dishes for your house. That is the little portion that we take because we've saved in the other categories. That's how you get extra money for savings. So once you've looked at your budget and you've put money away for certain things, try and spend under the budget 
and whatever's extra that you leave behind put it away and you can then use that for home improvements upgrades to spoil yourself to even go on traveling sometimes so try and spend under and that is the trick to finding extra money for that new handbag for that new set of pots to maybe even redecorate the house to paint the living room whatever it is that you want to do this is something that needs to come from money that you have saved extra money that you have saved and this is assuming you don't like to use your credit card if you are a person who uses their credit card use it knowing that you're going to be paying out from your debts debt repayment category all right good people i think that i've covered most of the things that you guys are talking about i've covered the tithing i've covered the pages i've covered the weaves i've covered the house i've covered the pots i've covered everything if i have not covered everything please let me know in the comment section down below and we'll find the money we'll find the money to make these things happen i hope that you guys enjoyed this tell it the tuesday and if you have any questions for future episodes please let me know just comment down below and do not leave this video without giving your girl a big thumbs up it lets me know that you like the content that i'm creating and i'll keep giving you more until next time beautiful people i'm kapana shimange and this is how i do things Hey gorgeous, thank you so much for making it to the end of my video. Thank you for supporting and thank you for sticking around. Now, if you want those financial resources that I've created for all of you guys, how to budget, finding the extra money for the things that you want, and also how to plan for the future that you want, then head over to my website, www.gopanishmanga.com and you can download all those resources that you want. It's completely free and you'll become part of the gorgeous gang once you do download those things. Now, if you have not subscribed, click on my face right here and it will help you to subscribe. But until later, I'll see you tomorrow morning at 7.30 South African time for the next live premiere.